It's now time for part two in the North American doubleheader and this weekend we race in Austin, Texas for the 2019 United States Grand Prix. And given the competitiveness at the front of the field right now in Formula 1, we are in for a great weekend of racing. But who exactly in America will come out on top and reign supreme? Well, join me in today's preview of the United States Grand Prix to look at who is going to be good and who will be contending for victory and also who in the midfield is going to do well as well. So if you want to find out from me how the United States Grand Prix weekend is going to go, then make sure to check out this video. But let's of course start off with what happened in last year's race in Kota. So of course, Kimi Raikkonen won his first race in about five years for Ferrari. In a great drive where he got ahead of Lewis Hamilton at the start, held him back very nicely and won the race on a very nicely handled one-stop race. Lewis Hamilton had the chance to win the championship in last year's race, but after failing to pass Max Verstappen, he had to wait until Mexico where, of course, he got it wrapped up. Driver of the day, though, was Max Verstappen and this time in this race, he actually deserved it because he started from basically the back of the grid and came so close to winning the race. And also, Sebastian Vettel decided to go spinning again. We also had a couple cars in Esteban Ocon and Kevin Magnussen disqualified from the race result after the race had finished. And also, Renault basically wrapped up P4 and the Constructors. But now for that team, it's time to try and wrap up P5. But here are the full results of last year's 2018 United States Grand Prix. A Grand Prix that was actually voted amongst the F1 fans and the F1 community as... The best race of 2018 and even though I do disagree with that I thought Brazil was better it was a classic and especially great to see the Iceman Kimi Raikkonen finally get back to the top step of the podium and the battle between Raikkonen and Verstappen and Hamilton was one of the best three-way battles for a race victory in recent times but also it is one week after the 2019 Mexican Grand Prix, a race where the third fastest team in qualifying actually went on to win. In a very well managed race from Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes where Ferrari once again locked out the front row and bottled it. And that is a thing that could easily happen this weekend as well. But since we've started coming to the Circuit of Americas in 2012, this track has really been dominated by Lewis Hamilton and his team Mercedes. As the only times Mercedes have not won this race was last year in 2018 and 2012 and 2013. But Lewis Hamilton here is a five-time winner and also has the most pole positions and has to be after Mexico where he drove so well, the favourite for this weekend. But as we know in Formula 1, that doesn't mean you're going to win. But now finally let's get into those top teams and how I think they are going to do. So first off Mercedes who of course... Coming into this weekend are going to be super confident after winning a race where they literally didn't think they were going to win or be even that close to winning. But still came through and got the race win and coming to this weekend, even though I don't think they'll have the absolute best car, considering their history around this track, their chances are a lot higher of winning here than they were in Mexico. And of course they won in Mexico so they're going to be strong no matter what. And of course, Lewis Hamilton can wrap up his sixth Drivers' World Championship this weekend. He couldn't do it in Mexico because Valtteri Bottas had finished on the podium. But again, he can do it this weekend in Texas. And this is what he has to do if he's going to do it. So for Lewis to win the World Drivers' Championship in Texas, he must finish P8 or higher to do so. If he finishes P8 or higher, no matter what Valtteri Bottas does, Lewis Hamilton is your 2019 World Drivers' Champion. But for Valtteri Bottas to continue the battle until Brazil, he must win the race with Lewis P9 or lower without Lewis Hamilton getting the fastest lap point. And no matter what the title battle, if it's going to continue, Valtteri has to cut the gap down to at least 51 points. If it's 52 points, then because Lewis Hamilton has way too many race wins to Valtteri Bottas's, Lewis will be champion. And yeah, basically, if Lewis Hamilton does finish the race, he will be the world champion, because of course that car is good enough at worst to finish in P6. And pace-wise this weekend, I think they'll be fine. I don't think they'll have the best car in qualifying, but in the race, they're going to be right there for the race victory. It's going to be very close between them, Ferrari, and also Red Bull and Max Verstappen, but... They are going to have a very good car 
and do not, even if they don't have a car on the front row, don't underestimate them for the race because we know how great their race pace is and I wouldn't be surprised if even if they qualified in P3 and P4, that they still won the race. Ferrari though are still recovering after the bottle job that was the Mexican Grand Prix, but this weekend we come to a track where Ferrari are going to be stronger. Because this circuit will suit the car more because most of the track is very fast and sometimes flat out. And of course, at fast circuits, Ferrari are basically the best. And in qualifying trim especially, they are nearly impossible to beat unless they make an error or have a reliability issue. So when it comes to qualifying, we know they are probably going to get pole position. But when it comes to the race, can they get the job done? I think people forget that Ferrari, despite being so quick in the last two or three races, they haven't won since Singapore because they continue to bottle races. And given how they performed as of late, I wouldn't be surprised if they did the same again because in the race, they're not going to have the best car and they're going to be under pressure to make big, important decisions when it comes to when they pit and when they don't pit. And knowing Ferrari, it will all go wrong and they'll end up not winning the race when even they lock out the front row of the grid. So Ferrari will have the speed, but they might not have the brains to win the race. For Red Bull though, they had a great chance with Max Verstappen to win the Mexican Grand Prix for the third time in a row for that team at that track in that country. But because of Max's, I guess, over-aggressiveness and his attitude during the weekend, it did not come off. But coming to this weekend, their chances of race victory are still possible. Because I think the race pace of the Red Bull still is very good. And you have to remember that in the last two years, Max Verstappen was probably the best driver in the last two races at this track after starting at basically the back of the grid. In 2017, he came from the back to almost get a podium, and in 2018, if he started where he normally would have, he probably could have won the race. So if Max Verstappen can start in a nice and competitive P4 or P5, watch out for him because he will have good pace to be at the very least in P3 and on the podium. But if he's going to win the race, he's got to start replicating the form he had in the first half of the season because... If that Max Verstappen shows up this weekend, they can win the race. Before we head into the midfield pack though, let's look at the Drivers' Championship and its top 10. So Lewis Hamilton of course is P1, Valtteri Bottas is P2, Leclerc is P3, Vettel P4 now ahead of Max Verstappen who has dropped down to P5. Pierre Gasly is up to P6, Carlos Sainz is P7, Albon is P8, Perez P9 and Daniel Ricciardo is P10. They're getting very close for P3 and P6 in the driver's table. But now let's get into those midfield teams and start off with Renault, who had a very mixed weekend in Mexico. Qualifying was terrible, the race was a lot better, and they got a result that wasn't great, but it was a big boost of confidence for the team that's been struggling when it comes to confidence for quite a long time. And they'll be hoping to carry it through to this weekend. And I think with Nico Hulkenberg for sure... They are going to be in there at the front of the midfield because Nico, historically, is good here and he does like this circuit quite a lot. So watch out for Nico Hulkenberg this weekend. As I expect him to be in the top 10 in qualifying in the race, even if the Renault car in qualifying is not that great. Daniel Ricciardo, though, I think will have a similar-ish race to what he had in Mexico. Qualifying won't go to plan, but in the race, because he's so great when it comes to pace, over a race distance and because he's so great at making overtakes when he really has to at critical times i think daniel ricardo even if he does start down in say p12 or p13 he'll be in there around p8 p9 by the end of the grand prix and i think renault will have a stronger weekend this weekend than what they had in mexico not a massively stronger weekend but qualifying for sure will be better for them and one team that will be hoping for a better weekend is McLaren because after qualifying where they locked out the fourth row and after the start of the race where they were looking very, very good, after the first round of pit stops, everything in Mexico fell away from them. Carlos Sainz on the hard compound tyre simply had no pace and Lando Norris had that front wheel nut issue. 
So they'll be looking to bounce back here in Cota. And I think they will. I think Carlos Sainz will bounce back and be at the front of the midfield pack in qualifying in the race. And Lando will not be right there with Carlos Sainz. But he'll be around P8, P9 and will be fighting away nicely for a good haul of points. As McLaren are getting pretty close now to confirming P4 in the Constructors. Something that of course they do very well deserve. One team though that doesn't really deserve that much from 2019 considering how they've fallen off is Alfa Romeo. In Mexico, I think to be honest they did the best they could in terms of the pace of the car. And the drivers I think did the best they could because simply the Alfa Romeo car is nowhere near as good as it was around Hungary or Hockenheim. And this weekend, I think they're in for a similar weekend. I think the best they can get is around P13, P14 in the race. Maybe with a couple retirements, they can get near points, but a points finish, no chance at all in my opinion. Alpha just don't have any speed anymore and their season is basically over. And for Haas F1, the same kind of goes for them, but they will have a better weekend for sure than they had in Mexico. Mexico, they were basically racing the Williamses, which is quite an embarrassment considering how bad Williams have been in 2019. But that's just how poor the Haas car was around that track. But this weekend, they'll go better because one is the home race. They'll be highly motivated to put in a good performance in front of their home fans. And I think the car generally does go better at a track like this. So I think they'll be better, but I don't think... They're going to be in the top 10 or anything like that. They'll be around Alfa Romeo and probably racing them during the weekend. So yeah, Haas, they'll be better than Mexico, which is not exactly an achievement, but they will not be in the points for sure. Toro Rosso in Mexico had a good weekend getting both cars into the top 10 and they did get a points finish, even though it wasn't quite as many points as they were hoping for. But coming to this weekend, I think they will carry through the good form that they've really had since Suzuka. And I think one driver we also, alongside Nico Hulkenberg in the midfield, we need to look out for is Pierre Gasly because this time last year in the Toro Rosso at this Grand Prix, he was very quick in the Toro Rosso in qualifying, but he had a grid penalty, so he couldn't quite do, say, what he could in terms of speed in qualifying. So watch out for him in qualifying in terms of the lap time he can do and where he does finish. And I think he will be the front-running Toro Rosso driver. But for the team, I don't think it will go pace-wise as well as Mexico because I just don't think the Toro Rosso car is going to be as suited to the Cota track, the Circuit of America's track, of course, uh, to the track in Mexico. I think in qualifying, they could probably get a car into the top 10. But in the race, I'm not sure they have a good enough, say, driver and car combination to get the job done. And I'll kind of say the same for Racing Point. The only difference is I think they can just about nick a point in the race. But in qualifying, I just don't think Racing Point have quite a good enough car to be Racing, say, McLaren, Renault, maybe even Toro Rosso. Toro Rosso are better than I'm expecting. But I think in the race, yeah, they can nick a point racing point with Sergio Perez for sure, who has been driving very well in the last two or three races. But it's going to be tough against drivers like Ricardo, Norris, Gasly, drivers like that. But if they want to finish P5 of the constructors, they've got to try somehow and get into the points because. It's now getting to that point of the season where things are pretty desperate. And talking of the Constructors, let's now get into it. So Mercedes, of course, are the Constructors champions. Ferrari are P2, Red Bull P3. McLaren, their gap to Renault is smaller, but McLaren are still going to finish in P4. Renault are P5, about nine points clear of Toro Rosso and Racing Point, who are joint sixth in the Constructors. And then Alpha are eighth, miles behind. Haas are ninth and Williams are tenth. But now we've covered the teams and how I think they're going to do. Let's look into this track, the Circuit of Americas, and what makes it such a great track that the drivers really enjoy. Well, in today's video, we're going to bring back the track guide. And again, if you want to comment on my driving as this is me driving this lap, then go ahead and do so. But now let's get into the lap. And as we now go down to turn one, turn one, a very important corner because it is an uphill braking zone, a very unusual braking zone. Turn one 
Locking the inside front is very common at turn one and you have got to get this right because if you do lock up and go a bit too wide, you've blown half a second right there. And also traction on exit is very, very important as we now come into the... And now we come into the S's, a part of the circuit that is very similar to Silverstone and Suzuka. And what a piece of racetrack it is, where you're just swinging and throwing the car in left and right, hoping the car sticks and trying to give it everything you have and try to provide the most commitment you have in those corners. And also, if you are committed in these corners and you get the corners right in terms of hitting the apexes exactly right, you'll get some nice payoff later on in the lap. And then the end of that section is the uphill left-hander where drivers all the time go way off the track because apparently that is now the track. And then we come down to the bumpy braking zone right before the very, very long back straight. A back straight that is also very bumpy and it is the ideal place for overtaking at the Circuit of Americas. If you don't pass here, then most likely you're not going to be able to make an overtake work. You can down into turn one, but if you're going to pass, it's going to be on this straight. Not only because of how long the straight is, but because of the braking zone at the very end of it, a heavy braking zone. And then you come into some very twisty corners where you can continue to fight for position and continue the battle. As into this corner, you can go on the inside or outside. And for the next corner, you can do the same. You can go inside or outside to try and make a move work. But then when you come into the triple right-hander, passing here has been tried. And most of the time, it doesn't work. Because it's such a difficult corner to keep your car on the right piece of racetrack going into the penultimate corners. And also in qualifying, this triple right-hander is flat out. But in the race, this corner destroys your tyres. And then we come into the last two corners, two left-handers. This one is where track limits are completely abused. And into the final corner, which is not that spectacular, you turn left and then come onto the pit straight. And that is a lap of the Circuit of Americas. Now that I mentioned tyre wear, though, at the end of that track guide, let's quickly go into tyres because... It was very important in Mexico what happened with the tyres and it will be this weekend as well because this track does kill tyres. And tyre wear as we saw in last year's race is a very very critical thing you've got to get right if you're going to have a good result. So as you can see here this is what the drivers have gone for in terms of how many tyres they've gone for for the C4, C3 and C2 compounds. This C4, C3 and C2 is the same specification basically as we had in last year's race because last year we had the second softest tire as the softest of the weekend brought to the US Grand Prix and that's the same for this weekend as well. Now the softest tire of last year the ultra soft was a very good tire of course for qualifying and the first two or three laps but once you got into say lap seven or eight as we saw Kimi Raikkonen it was very, very hard to drive, especially through those very fast, long corners. The middle tyre last year was the Super Soft, and this year, of course, it'll be the C3 yellow medium compound tyre. Now, last year, the middle compound tyre did perform well at the start of the race, but it still wasn't doing great in terms of tyre wear. Certainly not as great as the hardest compound, the Soft, of last year, which, of course, for this year is the white hard C2 compound. And that is the compound all the teams are going to use in the Grand Prix because last year it performed so, so well. And that is why Kimi Raikkonen, after going off the ultra soft tyre, was able to win the race because the soft tyre was so good for him. And getting on to the hardest compound of tyre to go to the end of the race will be a critical choice in the first 20 laps of the Grand Prix. But now, guys, it's time finally to get into my predictions for this US Grand Prix weekend now. For a change, we're not just going to talk about what the top three I think will be for qualifying the race. I'm going to give a very detailed prediction of what I think the grid will be for all 20 places and how I think the exact race result will go. So here is my full qualifying prediction. I've got there Q3, Q2 and Q1. Of course, in Q1 and Q2, that's who I think will be knocked out. And in Q3, that's what I think the finishing order of the top 10 is going to be. So, in my opinion... In qualifying, it'll be a Ferrari front row with Charles Leclerc in pole position with Sebastian Vettel P2, a Mercedes second row with Hamilton P3 and Bottas P4, a Red Bull third row with Verstappen P5 and Albon P6, 
And then at the top of the midfield will be Carlos Sainz in P7, Hulkenberg P8, Lando Norris P9, and Pierre Gasly, I'm going for a surprise in P10. Knocked out in Q2, I think, will be Sergio Perez P11, just missing out. Grosjean, I think, will do well in qualifying compared to how he did in Mexico. Raikkonen will do the best he can in 13th place. Yes, I am predicting more trouble for Daniel Ricciardo when it comes to qualifying, this time in P14. And Daniel Kvyat will be P15. And then knocked out in Q1 will be Lance Stroll, Antonio Giovinazzi, Kevin Magnussen, George Russell and Robert Kubica. I know I've got Giovinazzi 17th and he has been quite good in qualifying as of late. But I don't know, for some reason I just think he will struggle. And then this is what I've gone for for the race when it comes to the top 10 point scorers, the non-point scorers but finishing the race and the retirements. So in my opinion, winning the United States Grand Prix will be Max Verstappen, who is going to be looking to get revenge for the Mexican Grand Prix. Second place will be Lewis Hamilton, and third will be Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Then it will be Bottas P4. Sebastian Vettel will have, in my opinion, a dramatic race and finish in P5. And then in the midfield battle, Carlos Sainz will be P6, Hulkenberg P7. Ricardo will come through very strongly to finish in P8. Norris will finish P9 and Perez will nick a point in P10. And then finishing the race but not scoring points in my opinion will be Stroll, Kvyat, Raikkonen, and Giovinazzi, Gasly, Russell and Kubica. Gasly I think will have kind of similar to Sebastian Vettel a dramatic race where he really misses out on a good finish. And then the retirements in my opinion will be Alex Albon because of a reliability issue and the two horses because well... They're very prone to crashes, let's just put it that way. But that is, guys, what I think is going to happen at this weekend's 2019 US Grand Prix. Let me know in the comment section. For this race, similar to how I've done for qualifying the race, who will finish where in those two sessions and who will come out on top ultimately on Sunday afternoon, local time or Sunday night for us in the UK at the US Grand Prix. Let me know in the comment section down below. And also don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button for more content like this. Don't forget guys, tomorrow at I believe 7.30pm UK time, I will be live for practice 2 for the US Grand Prix. So until then guys, it has been me, Chazza HD. goodbye.